Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello fellow RVers, this is Rob. How you doing? This is episode 55. Welcome to the show. It's still hot here down in Arizona. Just got back from Texas. Thought I'd tell you a little bit about it. Here we go. Well, before I start talking about Texas and stuff, which was a fantastic place I got to tell you about. But uh, one of the interesting things I found out about this park, and, and we remember we're down in Arizona, right in the outskirts of, uh, of the desert. And so we see a lot of wildlife, but I actually heard something that was very interesting about the road runners. So we got little road runners here, and, and uh, uh, I guess they're actually more aggressive than I ever thought. So the lady in the office was saying that the reason we're not seeing like many rodents, and you won't see uh, and snakes and a lot of lizards and stuff, is because of the road runners that they've been having come in here. They're very aggressive birds. And the one thing I heard that was really amazing is they attack and eat rabbits. <laughs> it's like, so she says just the other day, man, she saw a road runner uh, taking out a, a, a bunny and she wanted to save him, but she knows out here that's how nature works. But I just didn't know that those little road runners were such nasty little birds. <laughs> And uh, they're really awesome to watch. Uh, they're, they're, I don't know, there's a couple of pairs of them here. And uh, I've never seen them attacking anything, but uh, they uh, are all over the park. I've had them under my truck and in the, under the RV. But anyway, just a little bit of information I pass on about Roadrunners. I didn't know that they were such an aggressive bird. I think the other thing that's been kind of interesting is uh, when we first got here and it was a little cooler, uh, we were actually seeing the javelinas in the evening. But now that it's really hot, actually we haven't been seeing the javelinas. So I, I, it's kind of um, irritating because, I, I mean, I like to see the wildlife. I know that they can be a kind of aggressive too. But um, I guess thanks to the heat, thanks to the birds, we're not seeing like critters we don't want to see like rattlesnakes. So, anyway, there's a, it's interesting how the wildlife works here in the desert. I think probably one of the funniest things that you see down here is because we're on the Indian Reservation and it's a, they have livestock here is two things. One is cows will be in the middle of the road. In the, in one, <laughs> we actually went to the casino, spent an hour or two there, uh, had dinner, a uh, great sushi dinner there, came back out, walked out the door, and I am not kidding you. There was a cow walking through the parking lot. And if the cows aren't enough, then it's the wild horses. And uh, which are kind of neat. They're, but you really got to pay attention driving around here because you can come around a corner and find a cow or a horse right in the middle of the road. Um, but it's kind of neat to watch the colts uh, growing up. So they're like teenagers now. Um, so uh, there's still wildlife, even if it's. Not hot out here, but the big thing right now is just kind of keeping your eyes open for monsoons. And no big deal except, uh, you know, you don't want to have your awning out. Uh, you just kind of want to batten down the hatches here a little bit when that happens. Um, and when it happens, it can shut down the power temporarily, things like that. So you really have to be on your toes. And it's also the time to kind of be careful and protect your animals. If those air conditioners go down, you got trouble. So... <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd kind of give you an update about what it's like with the uh, wildlife around here. Well, anyway, let's talk about Texas. So as I told you in the last show, I informed you that Sherry and I were getting ready to fly down to Texas. And, uh, yeah, we were looking at boats and sailboats, and, 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 and that may not be RV related. However, where we went, was and I gotta tell you, if you get a chance to go down to Kema, Texas, and the Kema Boardwalk, oh my lord, talk about a great place to take the family, take your partner, take your girlfriend, um, 
it's it's unbelievable. It was the greatest thing I've been around for. I mean, we had a really fun weekend, and we it was a four day trip. So we flew down, got to Houston. It was only twenty miles to go to the coast uh, to Kema, uh, Texas, and we just got a simple room at a quality inn. And we thought right off the bat, and, and uh, we'll have a video out uh, on that in a week or two. Um, went straight to the boardwalk over there, and it's enormous and um, amazing. Everything's going on there. There is every kind of food that you could think of. There was old-fashioned games that you could play to try to win a little treat for your girlfriend. Um, gosh, uh, bands. There was bands all over the place. And this, we got there on a Friday and we got there Friday kind of early and I didn't realize how lucky we were that we did that. So we're walking around and then you got kind of a, a canal, uh, where these boats are coming out and there was just boat after boat after boat after boat. And this was getting towards the late afternoon to evening. Uh, and, and the boat seemed to be getting bigger and pretty soon there was big tour boats coming out, all going out to the Galveston Bay area. And I didn't really know why until later, and I'll explain that in a minute. And uh, plus the crowd was getting bigger and bigger. Uh, then there's rides all over in, in this very irritating little train that rolled around the entire place. It was a great train ride. We didn't go on it, but it looked like a lot of fun. And it was loaded every time. And it went all over the park. And the other thing was kind of funny. I was watching everybody walking around playing Pokemon Go, <laughs> including Sherry and I. So lots of Pokemon. We got lots of them. Anyway, um, but uh, later on, um, and then uh, I guess in the parks there and stuff, you can drink alcohol because uh, there's people drinking beer and uh, having um, daiquiris and stuff and no big deal. And, and there was nobody obnoxious either. It was really... A good family environment. So as the evening goes, uh, then we, we come to find out that there's some fireworks every Friday night, all during July, and I uh, and that's what I understand. It could be more, but uh, because that whole boardwalk is owned by like one guy, and I guess he owns properties over in Las Vegas too. And that's all I know about him. Uh, anyway, the fireworks. Um, were really good for you know shooting them off every week if you think they'd have kind of a tight budget but all those boats were going out to the bay and anchoring so they could see the fireworks and uh it was really fun to watch all the different kind of boats uh and then there's tour boats too that people would book just to go out so they could see the fireworks from the water and what a it was a great show, and it had music to it. And uh, once again, if you get a chance to see our video, it'll be out on the 10th of uh, August is scheduled. And uh, you'll be able to see all what that place was like. And the other thing we did while we were there, of course, is we told you we were looking at sailboats. And once again, i got to tell you, that doesn't mean we're going to get away from RVing. Uh, it's kind of like a secondary home for us that we're looking at. We could buy a house, almost the same price it seems like, um, and still use our RV and, and do the uh, snowbirding. Or we could use our RV and then go to the coast, which we're thinking San Diego, uh, every once in a while for extended weekends. We got a couple you know, months or years to learn how to sail and all that stuff. So it's going to be really fun because not only will we have great RV stories and places that we do on road trips here, we'll have water activities and, and some really good footage of uh, aqua type of stuff and uh, in San Diego. And, and so we're going to really have a really good platform of all kinds of stuff to show you. We're just in that transition period right now of having the two things. So the five boats we did, there was a boat that caught our eye down there in Texas. And um, to be serious with you, we literally almost bought it. And um, kind of, I, I haven't found a better boat than that for the money. The problem is, is because it's in Texas, it's like the cost of us to go to Texas, eh, not that bad. Uh, for extended times, but the logistics of that and our pets 
uh, I think it's just a little bit over the top. So, uh, but we got to look at five really good boats, gave us some really good criteria to work against as we look at boats here on the West Coast. And so uh, we've kind of lined up a few more. We will be heading over to San Diego probably, um, I don't know, the weekend of, uh, I don't know, August 5th, 6th, somewhere around there, and have a couple that are catching our eye. Uh, we Now we have a price point, and we've got other things to compare to. It makes us a little more powerful about making offers on a boat. But we're getting close, but not there yet. Um, but anyway, getting back to Texas, I also wanted to talk about the beaches. So, you know, everybody has a bucket list, and mine has been touching all the different oceans. And I've been fortunate, of course, obviously, the Pacific. And I uh, was over in the East Coast, so I got to go see the Atlantic and touch it and get uh, take some rocks out of it. <laughs> anyway, I was over in Connecticut. And then uh, I've been to Sea of Cortez, where I actually went uh, fishing in Mexico, well, off of uh, Cabo San Lucas. So I've been there. So the only one I hadn't been to is the Gulf of Mexico. Now, Sherry's only had the Pacific, so now she's got two under her belt. So it was really crucial and important that we actually went to the ocean, not the bay, but actually out to the Gulf of Mexico. So we could have that little check mark on the uh, bucket list. So, of course, after the day that we looked at boats, the following day we left totally open to go cruise around. So we uh, went over to Galveston, and uh, I didn't realize Galveston was actually on an island. And so uh, got quite educated. You know, when they had the Hurricane Ike, I guess that place was devastated. And so when they rebuilt things, they did everything on stilts. So it was amazing, and you'll see this in the video too. All the houses, all the stores, all the hotels that are on the man-made island there by Galveston is on stilts. And they also call that the seawall. So that was really interesting to see the architecture of all those places. But I think the coolest thing in the world, now if you live in the East Coast down in Florida or down, you're going to laugh at me and Sherry, but we were truly amazed of when we went out, took off our shoes, we still look like, like we weren't, the locals knew we were from someplace else because we weren't dressed right. Anyway, we went out. We actually had to go to Target and buy shorts because that's how unprepared we were. Anyway, walked out to the ocean and could not believe how warm the water was. I mean, we're talking bathtub water. We're talking no shocker at all. Literally comfortable water. So it was so cool that we just walked out. And we only went to like our knees or so just because we didn't want and I had a wallet and all that stuff. We weren't prepared to actually go there. but And and we also got a big kick out of seeing some hermit crabs. We never seen those before. But uh, yeah, families just go in there. They sit in the water and let it um, just lay there. And that's how Texans cool down. But a lot, and I've talked to a lot of them, very friendly people. And uh, yeah, a lot of them from Houston or something, they'll come down for the weekend. And when they go down to the beaches that aren't so commercial, um, they just back their cars up. They put up something with shade, like those little tent things. Uh, crucial, you have shade. Lots of food and water. And uh, they just kick back all day long and just enjoy being at the ocean and a chance to cool down because the humidity is... Boy, when you come from Arizona to there, you can feel that humidity immediately. So all in all, I just got to give a big thumbs up to the Kema, uh, Texas area, the boardwalk, Galveston, the ocean, the people, the food. Oh, my God. We got to try uh, oysters, all kinds of uh, different ways of cooking them as they're uh, cooked over open fire. Uh, we uh, got to try... Uh, we did go to a, what they call Tom's T-Bones, a um, uh, place where he was kind of famous for his uh, steaks. So we definitely had a Texas steak, and that was awesome. And, yeah, I just can't tell you. Uh, I have There isn't a lot of places where you just go, fly to, and the, in, everything you do was fun. And that was one of those places. So, once again, if you get a chance, 
go down to Kema, which is K-E-M-A-H, Texas. Check out the boardwalk down there. Um, if you just want to learn how to relax, have a great day. If you have kids, kids will love it. Uh, no lack of things to do, no lack of food. People are nice, activities, and fireworks. So anyway, check it out, people. Kema, Texas. So yesterday I uh, actually watched a video of, uh, I won't say who made the video, but they were discussing their experience as a work camper at a kind of a, uh, I think it was called American Parks or something. Anyway, uh, and it was kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say disturbing, but yeah, it was to me, and I don't know why. And I think it's because of this thing I can't, constantly talk about people about oh yeah they get an RV and, and, and cheat the system a little bit where you go out and be a work camper and travel and um, and it might work great if you're single maybe just a couple but if you're a family and a whole work site you know and, and those kind of jobs uh, especially at parks now I don't have problems with work camping with like the Amazons and the actual companies or something like that where you're actually at a park but you're leaving the park to because hundreds of people are using RVs for regular jobs but this work camping thing uh, is a real good opportunity that I've seen a couple of times to be taken advantage of and so and that's what the parks are trying to do is have labor cheap labor and keep their numbers down uh, so you know they will give some free parking space for your time and, and some of those positions are a great situation great for someone who's retired that a little bored and wants something to do uh, can be a nice relationship but there's other places that they just look at the numbers and so he was kind of saying how people were, uh, were not um, being treated well and uh, it was you know, money over people, you know, type thing or greed. And uh, it's one of those where you almost want to say, well, you know, you, you put yourself in that, that situation. I, um, I'm i stubborn. Maybe uh, I have a, I'm not humble enough, but I would never last long at a place like that at all. But I also, you know, I... I grew up uh, learning skills. I have electrical, fiber optics, teaching, um, and uh, um, uh, computer, internet marketing, things like that in my background. So um, my, I just uh, know that I have talents that I could use to work in a regular professional kind of area. So uh, I... The only reason I would do work like that is because it was fun, um, made a couple extra bucks. Pretty much I was doing it for fun. <laughs> and uh, uh, extra bucks are always good, but uh, if I could, you know, I'm retired now, so, but uh, I don't make big bucks anymore. But uh, I wouldn't mind, you know, it wouldn't bother me to do something that's fun, working with the people, not too much, you know, crappy type of work. Uh, but something where you don't have to worry about how much you're making um, if I was good at being a barista working at Starbucks I think if I only had to do that for a couple of hours a day and it was because I wanted to I would think that would be fun labor to do and I really wouldn't care about getting top dollar money as long as I had a good working environment and I was doing something that was fun um, one of the things I'm looking at is once we get into the sailing um, might get my skipper's license and uh, maybe start taking people out. Uh, so turning something I enjoy into making a few extra bucks, but it's not going to be big bucks. It's just doing labor or doing some kind of work that I enjoy and um, hopefully get, you know, at least a fair trade of money or, um, and I just, I can't see me working in an RV park, but uh I guess the the point to this whole thing is is like some people paint this picture of this work camping thing so wonderful 
And I'm saying it's probably a wonderful opportunity to be taken advantage of. So I'd really weigh that carefully. And so the only thing I kept saying to myself is one is, dude, why don't you get learn some skills and go get at least a trade type skill work that will be treated well and to probably make good, better money. And uh, or, you know, and I know it's easier said than done, um, but um, that you put yourself in that own situation. And, and the thing is, yeah, get the heck out of there. Cool. But um, it, it, it was almost presented like he had to do it. I have to take that kind of work. And it's like, no, you don't. Um, but you're going to have to make some sacrifices and go to a trade school. or, or um, There's great ways to be a, learn how to weld, be electrical, um, all kinds of plumbing and, and uh, roofing and construction and things to learn that would actually give you a decent wage. And you could still make it part-time, and you could still travel and use that skill. So if you're listening to me, I guess the part is if you're young and you have a skill that's awesome, use it. Um, but if you're young and you have the energy, um, take that one-year course or a half-year course or uh, learn a trade, something that can be uh, like accounting. <laughs> like my wife, she can go anywhere and get work. And, uh, yeah, it's a sacrifice. Yeah, you're not traveling at the time. You're stuck or whatever. But then you got this passport that you could take with you everywhere that if you need to work, you got this passport of work where you can actually get pretty decent labor. Uh, wait, you know, well, decent labor and wages. So I know I'm going to, I'm digging a hole and I'm going to get people mad at me about that stuff. But and I guess that's an old schooler kind of vision but um, it's still very important education or learning a trade I just can't emphasize enough that yeah I know you want the American dream of being free right, right away but um, you know getting that degree getting educated um, getting that base or learning a great skill which is very important we need mechanics we need uh, welders we need plumbers we need good ones and we need and and yes being mobiles is even better and even in the rv industry um being a mobile inspector for rvs uh great skill to have there's a school for that refrigeration things like that there's a lot of great skilled jobs you could find but you need to invest in yourself first. And so once you do that, it's like a card-carrying kind of labor guy that you can do anything you want. And so, I don't know, I'll quit preaching. But food for thought, people. Be careful about work. Work camping is not as glamorous as you think. Anyway, let's move on. Well, it's that time again for me to remind you to contact us talk to us so when you get a chance you can do it through several ways uh you know we make a video version of this um podcast and you can make comments down there uh the best way is go to rv talk radio and go to the facebook page and there's a button at the top that says message and what's really cool about that is if you actually write a message we get notified on our cell phone right there and then so if we're available We'll talk to you almost immediately uh, if we're driving or something like that, maybe an hour or two. But uh, we love that uh, feedback. And and then last but not least, there's two other ways you can actually email me directly at rob at rvtalkradio.com. Uh, or just go to RV Talk Radio and go to the contact page, and uh, that's kind of private, and nobody sees it, and you can shoot us a note there, and we get lots of notes, and uh, some stuff is just kind of dialogue between the listener and us, and sometimes it's stuff that's really good to put on the radio station and, and or to listen to. Uh, the other thing I'll let you know is, um, and you heard us talking about, and we're hamming it up, but yes, we are shutting down the outdoor travel radio, and and... I guess this is the thing where I tell people is like, you need to try stuff. 
And I was always curious about how these people did our uh, internet radio. And uh, the trickiest part is getting a music license. And I found a way how to do that. And so everything I did for that uh, was set up where it wasn't long, no contracts. So I, 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 it was fun. It was a great experience. And it allowed me to understand how internet radio works. And uh, when I take on something that one is not really making money <laughs> as one, two, uh, if it takes a lot of exercise, I mean exercise, <laughs> I need exercise. If it takes a lot of effort and you're not getting enough back out of it, then eventually is it a hobby or is it going to be something that's uh, uh, worth the effort money-wise? And so after three months of that, I determined that it's like, uh, I don't think this lifestyle is what I want. And I certainly don't want to uh, uh, go around begging for sponsors and commercials. And so uh, I, it was like, okay. It's been a couple of months now. This was really fun. I really got a kick out of it, uh, but I'm going to shut it down. So all the sites and all that stuff, the radio station will actually stop operating in probably a few more weeks. It's still going, uh, but it will shut down. All the sites and all that stuff will point to RV Talk Radio and come back to that. So anyway, that's the big thing I keep telling people to try is try things out. Don't go through life saying, what if? I was wondering what it was like to do that. I tried it. It wasn't too expensive to really do. There is probably, I would guess, about $100 a month to do something like that. You have to get a music license. you got to have hosting, and you got to have software that put, controls the music and uh, commercials and all that stuff. So uh, if, uh, if you think about doing a radio station, um, you can contact us anytime. I can tell you how we did it. Um, and if you do one, you, it's got to be your life. It's got to be 24 seven thinking about that radio station, how to get people engaged in it. So it was really fun to do and what a great opportunity, but, um, it was time to say, okay, uh, this is not the direction we want to go. And, and we're doing radio stations, uh, takes every day. You got to about think about stuff. A podcast is nice because you can just set aside a couple of hours once a week to make a podcast. And if you know, like if we were traveling and, and knew we were going to be gone for a couple of weeks, I could actually make a few shows ahead of time. So when you're doing this or recording or documenting your travels and stuff like that and taking pictures and doing videos and making podcasts, you have to ask yourself, uh Enough is, you know, where's the limit of how far or how much you're going to maintain where it's not fun anymore. So I just knocking out a part of, of it was fun, but at the same time, it's like, uh, it's a lot of energy to put into something that's not giving back to me and Sherry. So anyway, it was a fun, uh, opportunity. The, uh, Facebook pages in the group will dissipate. Uh, we actually, um, took, took some of that stuff out already. Uh, the Facebook page will probably dis disappear in about two weeks. Anyway, um, no big deal. Other than the fact, I can now say I've tried it, done it, and I'm not running through life going, I wonder if what it's like to have a radio station. Well, I can answer that question now. Um, was I successful? We did have listeners. It was growing a little bit, but it was uh, um, not... Um, the format that I think would be real popular. So, hey, we give it a shot. It was kind of cool. Anyway, as for this station, it's still growing. Uh, we hit some milestones in the podcast side of things. You can't see that. If you listen to this on the video version, you'll notice that we only do maybe 100 uh, views a week on these shows. And that's because it's a video version. And a lot of people don't listen to videos for 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, some some do like this format. Uh, it's the records that we see or the documentation statistics that we see on the podcast thing is we're seeing a very good growth and we're very thoughtful, uh, thankful, and we appreciate your guys' support. And uh, so, yeah, uh, send us your notes. Send us our comments. Uh, we like to hear what we're doing right, things you'd like to see us add. Uh, constructive feedback is awesome. Constructive feedback. 
uh, and and people that are nasty or rude like that, my only answer to you guys would be, I don't see you sticking your neck out trying new things. That's my answer. <laughs> so there. <laughs> neener, neener, neener. So anyway, thank you very much, guys, for giving out a shot, checking out the radio station. Time to move on to other other projects, and we do have other projects in, in the works. So <laughs> that's why I like, all right, do I still want to do this when I know something else is coming up? And so uh, stand, uh, be ready because we got all kinds of cool stuff coming up, some really good stuff. So anyway, right now we're just kind of in this transition mode, like I keep telling you. And uh, uh, hang tight. It's going to get better. Well, Sherry and I have had definitely a dilemma going on, which was really unexpected. And it has to do with our mail. And people are always asking about how do you handle mail with uh, when you're our veer. So, you know, we're from Washington State, so all of our stuff, our registrations, our banks, everything's are in Washington. So we get this call the other day, and um, we keep our box over in Makotio, and the person that owns the mailbox place that forwards our mail and stuff like that graciously tells us they're going out of business. What's the chances of that? Oh, my goodness. Well, that's wonderful except we didn't have a whole lot of time. It was just before we left for Texas, so we couldn't do anything till we got back. And so, um, you know, we we talk about and we love Anna Cordis a lot, and so we know there's a place up there that we like. So we contacted them and uh, to set up a mailbox up there. Uh, the bad part about mailbox forwarding and stuff like that is typically you can't set up a forwarding address to the post office. That's one problem. Two is when you set up mailbox forwarding, you know, you're giving them permission to sign for your packages and stuff like that. Well, if you're there personally, no problem. You fill out the paperwork, you're good to go. But when you're uh, 1,500 miles away, you need to have the paperwork notarized. So, oh, Lord. So we finally, the, she, uh, the person uh, uh, gave us PDFs of all the forms and we had to go to our, our bank, get our notary, uh, get that all notarized, sent back. Um, was it, I mean, uh, other than the fact that, you know, you had kind of legal obligations to take care of, it was kind of a pain. And I know we're probably going to have some mail goofed up. But, and then poor Sherry had to spend uh, uh, an entire evening going through a list of lots of things that needed the address change all you know any credit cards uh, banks um, dumb things like Netflix to Amazon to um, dish network just uh, um, you know our business license things like that um, it just it was like a, a long a lot longer list than you uh, think of when you first think of it and after you get going it was like ugh. so it was really a pain and so anyway uh, just to let you know it can happen your mailbox companies can go out of business uh, just be aware of that it could happen and kind of have a secondary place in mind if you're ever uh, that does occur so you can make the switch as quickly as possible so that was uh, lessons learned on that the other thing is I want to talk about a phenomenon that I keep noticing that is many people have the same phenomenon. <laughs> now, this is kind of silly. Don't laugh, but it's true. Why is it everybody loves Captain Crunch cereal? <laughs> I'm not kidding you. So we went before we uh, uh, our new friends that finally left to go get married and stuff. Uh, we were having dinner with them, and uh, they were talking about a shopping experience, and one of them snuck a box of Captain Crunch in the basket, and, and they said they were fighting over it. It was so good. And, of course, I went to the grocery store, and uh, since Sherry's working, I try to do the grocery shopping now. Anyway, I'm going through the aisle, and I'm looking, and I'm thinking, man, those Captain Crunch are looks, looks – yeah, we try to get nutritional stuff, but every once in a while, I don't care what you say, Captain Crunch is just plain old yummy. So, 
And the reason I just thought of it is I took a break from uh, doing the show, had to get some breakfast on me, and I uh, had a bowl of Captain Crunch, and it's like, all right, this is yummy. I'm glad I'm not eating it all the time, but when you only have it once in a while, it's pretty yummy. So, But, yeah, stick to your brand, people. <laughs> anyway, uh, Captain Crunch, I think it, I don't care how old you are, it's always yummy. I think the other thing about food is kind of interesting. I'm not sure if it's something that happens when you get older or not, but I've found that when I was younger, I was like, oh, I don't like hot stuff. I wasn't all that. The older I get, the more I'm starting to like different foods that I kind of thought I didn't like when I was younger, uh, it's, it's, um, especially it's like spicy food, uh, Mexican food, or having sushi that's a little bit got a kick to it, things like that. Um, I, I'm, even you know a, a more potent salsa, so yeah, I say right, salsa. Um, anyway, I just noticed uh, even like kibasa or something like that, and where you get actually always went for the mild, and you kind of want something with a kick now. I don't know. I'd love to hear from you guys of whether, uh, as you've gotten older, uh, your palate is uh, more um, excited about different flavors and stuff. I think that's why I started liking sushi. Is you eat sushi and your your taste buds are exploding with different flavors. Most of the, uh, once in a while is not the right flavor, but when you get the right sushi rolls that you like, whatever, your palate is just on overdrive. And so it's really nice, and it's kind of fun when you get older because I find that uh, we experiment and try different foods that we never tried before. Some are a bomb. Some of them are like, wow, why didn't I do this 20 years ago? So anyway, getting old isn't always bad. Sometimes there's some good things that uh, happen with that. And one is I think you're, you're um, uh, being a little more experimental and open-minded with foods is just plain old fun, and I enjoy that. And so I'm not talking about bad foods. I'm talking about good foods, just different cultures, different flavors, things like that, different spices that you probably didn't, you thought you didn't like, and then pretty soon it starts going, wow, um, maybe I should give this a second chance. So, guys, open up your minds. Try some new foods. Try different flavors. The worst thing you need to do is not like it. Oh, well. And the other thing I wanted to make sure and remind you guys about is, of course, uh, as we grow and these things, we're doing stuff, uh, I want to remind you that we still have uh, and always will have different stickers. We have the RV Travel Buddy stickers and the RV Talk Radio stickers. Uh, been very popular. Uh, they're like five bucks a piece. They do help us a little bit. If you look down in the description of the uh, show here, you'll see a link always to our stickers, and we appreciate that. You'll also start probably uh, start noticing that we are have set up a Patreon account that um, is based off of our big shows. Now, when we do um, videos for the podcasts and, and our little uh, side shows of doing uh, RV uh, um, do-it-yourself stuff or reports, uh, it's the bigger production shows that we're doing now that we're putting through Patreon and, and, and trying to get supporters to help us uh, be patrons uh, as we grow our channel. And you'll start seeing uh, us develop a storyline that's going to continue. And uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of new stuff. So if you um, feel a, uh, whether a little, uh, that you enjoy Rob and Sherry and what we do, we work hard for you. We keep trying new ideas. Uh, get better and better as we go. Uh, we do appreciate if you get a chance to become a patron. Uh, one of the things that's kind of neat about being a patron is we deliver things to you guys first. Uh, so you get to see our shows early, uh, any special content. Uh, when we start having more patrons, we're actually going to probably make more private videos for them to kind of talk about behind the scenes of uh, some of the things we're doing uh, everybody says oh yeah the great life is like the 10 minute video <laughs> you know it's the other 24 hours that are really interesting how did we get here and how did we record this and how did we make it and uh, how do we survive every day um, those are the kind of little side videos that you won't see on our YouTube they won't be listed but they will be on our Patreon um, account so only our patrons can see 
and uh, when we put a video that um, comes out early, you can donate you know, two dollars a video or five, ten, fifteen, whatever you feel is a uh, uh, fair uh, to help uh, us uh, keep up equipment. Uh, we we keep buying new stuff. We're probably looking at some new sound equipment, and we're looking at another portable camera. Uh, with stabilization so we don't have to walk around with a gimbal uh, for all these sporadic things. There's nothing more uh, intrusive than being like on an airplane with a GoPro and if you mount it on a gimbal system it's quite intimidating and uh, cumbersome to carry around so we uh, uh, try to use cameras with stabilization in them for those quick things that we don't upset people around us and uh, do good reporting and let you kind of get a feel for what it, what we're going through in real life. So anyway, we do appreciate the support, uh, stickers, Patreon, or just going to our website and giving a donation. We appreciate it. Uh, things are, um, because we're investing in some more equipment and so are, uh, also another RV re, uh, related type, which is actually going to be an SV, a sail vessel. Uh, you know, our, our funds are going to be uh, not as loose as they used to be. So any kind of help we can get, we surely do appreciate it. And it, um, what's really cool about us is, you know, <clears throat> we're a corporation, so it's important that you realize that anything that is sent to us is recorded properly. Uh, when it's appropriate is uh, we pay the taxes, and we are very a very legit foundation, So, and we always will be. So thank you so much for those of you that have participated and bought some of our stickers and have donated to us. And what we really uh, look forward to is having Patreons um, that we can support with special um, gift almost every time we do a video, special things that only they get to see. And uh, uh, we were talking about you can do something as low as $2 a video and uh, it won't even uh, hardly affect you. And uh, But if you can do more, we appreciate it. We will spoil our patrons big time. So anyway, thank you, and let's move on. Well, I was watching another video just the other day, and I got a kick out of it. And uh, uh, I'm going to uh, also put our two cents in for me and Sherry. And it was uh, Into the Winds. And, uh, you know, you, if you watch them, you notice they're going into uh, uh, catamaran s sailing, a little different than uh, what Sherry and I know, where we're looking at a monohull. And uh, lots of similarities. Uh, differences between the two is we're going to continue doing RVing and blend the two, uh, where they're actually going to go full time on just one um, subject, which would be sailing. And they just did a video, a uh, kind of sporadic one, which they don't normally do, just talking about uh, fear. And uh, and I talk about this a lot in our show, too, is, is, for example, you hear that Sherry and I are getting ready to take on something new. And uh, is it going to be hard? Yes. Expensive? Yes. Cumbersome? Yes. Is it going to be uh, dangerous? Yes. Is it going to be uh, a challenge? Yes. Is it going to be costly? Yes. <laughs> and uh, I think this goes on. Uh, and um, uh, aren't you afraid to go out there and uh, weather and stuff? Uh, certainly. And then the difference between winds and us is we've been out there and we know how bad it can get. And uh, we haven't seen the, the worst yet either. Uh, anyway, but it's all about facing your fear. Uh, trying the unknown. Is it going to be difficult? Yes. Are we going to make some mistakes? Yes. Are we going to have some heartbreak? Probably. And uh, so, you know, um, it's no different than the fact that we finally took the uh, chance of doing an early retirement for me, uh, traveling in a fifth wheel, um, still not... Uh, conquered the problem we're having with uh, health care where we could be a little more free uh, we're still working that doesn't mean we give up we're not throwing our hands in the air 
um, what we're kind of looking at is like, all right, we have to play this game between 55 and 65. Then let's do something productive during that time. And that's where the sailing uh, idea kind of fit in saying, you know what? If Sherry still has to do her 9 to 5 and she doesn't mind working, she likes her job. She likes accounting. And uh, uh, I like what I do now where I'm doing our podcasts and our shows and stuff. But I need busy work, too. And trust me, uh, right now the, the RV has been running. Everything's running fine, so there's really not a whole lot to fix. Um, but sailboat is a busy job thing, too, where I could, if we have it located over in uh, San Diego, then, you know, she, Trace, um, the dog, Cinder and me, uh, can head over there for a couple of extra days, work on projects. Um, you know, it, it's going to be like a second home. And uh, it's going to take time to get the training that we need, all of our certifications. And uh, so uh, it kind of works kind of nice, the fact that we have um, Sherry still working where we can uh, f try to pay for all this stuff. But it will get harder and tight. It's not a cheap thing. You know, you know mortgage alone for the kind of boats that we're looking at could be up to $1,000 a month. And that's not counting the boat, and we are probably going to finance that. Uh, do we have any debt? No. We're uh, debt-free except for our RV. So we're kind of set up to do that, but it will get harder and tighter, and which means more funds will go towards that than playing with radio stations and things like that. That makes sense. That's one of the reasons why it was time to cut out some of the things that are costly. Because we know that's coming up. <coughs> But I, I guess the big part is I keep telling people, don't go through life saying, what if? We will make mistakes. We will get scared. We'll scare you probably too. Um, but we're also uh, putting everything in place, giving ourselves time to learn. Even though we have water or marine background, we don't have the sailing background. We got a lot to learn. And you can see when you watch... Uh, uh, Gone with the Winds, too. Uh, they've got a lot to learn, too. And you have no idea just how much money that they're probably dishing out to do what they're doing right now to try to get that catamaran up and running. Talk about an expensive machine. And uh, monohulls are not much better. So uh, uh, we're looking forward to finding the right one. We actually came very close. Uh, but Texas was just logistically it's just not going to work with our scenario because you know we've told you uh, with Sherry still working in the healthcare uh, to be shooting over with the cost of going over there all the time just would probably take us over the top can't quite do it but the thing is we ask everybody should go through life trying something that's different if you are afraid try to jump over that barrier head on Make mistakes, you, and I guess you know they're beginning to show up until you like the radio station. Face your fears. Try, if there's something you've always kind of wanted to look into, look into it. You don't have to do it. Just like the sailboat thing, we made to say, you know what, this is just too much to handle. Will I be embarrassed? No. Um, I, I tell even people I talk to like, yeah, I had a business once and I w uh, went under or I, I went bankrupt or something. I'm still going to shake your hand and say, dang, good for you. You tried it. I mean, you don't have to go through life saying, what if I would have started that little candle store? What if I would have st uh, started that little uh, gift shop at, at the ocean? Or um, at, at least you tried. And that's really important. And you faced your fears. And, uh, and face the unknown. And I urge everybody to take a look at that. Do you have some unknowns or fears that you have that's keeping you from doing something while like retiring earlier or, or uh, selling your house or traveling or whatever it could be? Um, think about it. at least some of these people you're seeing are... Uh, are facing those fears, jumping out there. There's a lot you don't see behind the scenes, which is even harder. The things that are really hard are behind the scenes. And that's what's neat about Patreon accounts is we share those harder things with you that you probably have no idea was going on in the background to make some of the, these things show in our videos. 
Um, so anyway, uh, face your fears. Uh, I was really uh, uh, thumbs up to do uh, Gone with the Winds with that video. I think Sherry and I, we, uh, we talk about that a lot on our radio show, but we don't, we haven't done a lot of videos about it. So um, I think the closer that Sherry and I get into our uh, situation and we start getting everything defined clearly, uh, we'll probably start doing the same thing, showing you behind the scenes more. So, yeah, face your fears, folks. Go for it. And there you go. Man, another hour, almost an hour has gone by. It's amazing how quick it goes. Covered a lot of stuff today. So, yeah, we talked about Texas. And we talked about <laughs> Captain Crunch. Facing your fears. All kinds of stuff. Anyway, I guess uh, the big part is uh, uh, we're here. Things are happening. Rob and Sherry, we're very grateful to our listeners. Thank you for all the great growth. We do ask everybody to share our videos, share our podcast. Uh, make sure you at least like our stuff and subscribe. Tell people about us because it's really up to you. It's uh, We need you to help us grow. And so with your help, uh, our great listeners, uh, we want your feedback. Talk to us. Tell us your stories. Uh, tell us your ideas. Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we could do better. We would appreciate that. And I just want to say thank you so much. So from Robin Sherry, from RV Talk Radio, I want to thank you for listening. Be safe and have a great week, everybody. See you next Monday. Bye now. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a patron supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.